Well, I haven't, I haven't sort of recovered from what I said to you about the outcomes thing. I feel very dissatisfied. Look, it's very dissatisfied about, about the comments what one made there. But, but in, in a curious, in a curious way, I, I, I think they were fair. I think what wasn't perhaps stressed was that the man. Great ability, and then that's something one should, should you know, belittle. You know, to, 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 have, to have such dexterity is, is marvelous. But, but to, to use a dexterity in not communicating the consequences of, of your acts is, is, a seri is a serious thing to do, really. And per perhaps it was on that heavy note that, that, that I founded with this drawing. But, but I, do, I do find them a great element. That building is just dry, really, because I think it seems to cut itself off from the richness of the English <laughs> country house tradition. And it attempts, in the jury fashion, as Dalibor said, to, to, to reinvent or, or reinvest the motifs with, with meaning, it, in the sense that it's not a very Eloquent, or elegant building to me. I, 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 I find it lacking in richness and lacking in meaning. And in a word, it's dry. The study dries. I wonder, really, because the the the, 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 the marvelous thing about Paul Shepard really is that that. that his little introduction it is, is splendid, really. It, that, that they, none of the five people have said as clearly what their intentions are. It, it is tremendously pithy and personal, and you can, you can sort of see his face in, 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 in the world. Curiously, he, he, the drawings are almost like a an armor version of Paul. I, 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 I think, you know, I think it is as if he has presented himself, as, he's, as if he's presented a fence to us. And he's put out a whole series of skillful devices on it and said, that'll pop sure, soft out. You know. And he's right to it. He's, he's done it. <laughs> well, I think, yes, I think it's a bit depressing, but it's uh, an armored version. Um, uses fashion as armor. Um, I couldn't think of a more fashionable list of subjects, you know, right down to turning brick in the other way around. Um, and I think, I think they're wasted. I mean, I must say, I'm far more enjoyed reading what he'd written than, than looking at these. I, they, um, it's, it's, it's a sort of fashionable armor that really, uh, you know, it, it's, it's sort of whimsy without zest. I don't find any of the weight in, the, in any of these that I've seen in some of his other work. Um, I don't find the, um, you know, is it a joke, is it real um, farm story, which is, is when written, is, is, is great. When you look at the drawings, he's blown it. When you, when you look at the adaptations, I think in the writing bit he talks about the card tennis court and the Pigs. And, and, and you start, you know, there's a whole thing there in, in patterning, in as found, in what's needed, etc., etc., which are the equations of whether an architect is useful or not. You know, whether you whether you stay off or go further into it, take the equations further and more rich in a way that otherwise couldn't have happened. Back to the distortion, the very first uh, person we have today. And um, I find that I find the drawing a terrific letdown. Because I, I, as I say, I don't think we're here today to say, oh, I like that drawing. I, don't, I, I can say that, but it's not my interest. I think that, uh, that what James is, there's an armor here, and, and what I find is it's an armor of, of a sort of, um, it's, it's bordering on the fade fashionable, which is a pity, because there's obviously more in the ideas. I can just comment here because I think the, the, the sort of organizers note. Um, 
I haven't actually seen the majority of the drawings throughout in this exhibition until I came back to the States last week, except for Alf Oberhoffers, who, who did in fact present the work that we all knew that he had done over the last few years. But in the case of the other, and, and Mark, some of Mark's things, back. but um, in the case particularly of, of Paul, in the first part, and, and Will, um, one simply asks them to, to put things into this exhibition based upon the intelligence that one knew that they had, based upon a sort of strange mishmash of memories of what they had done in the past. And, and in fact, in those three cases, they said, well, you know, we're going to put in some new things that you probably won't have seen. And I think this is quite interesting yeah. as, a, as a, a sort of a side level, that, that one is, in, in a sense, um, Backing, backing sophistication and intelligence. And I use the word sophistication first quite deliberately since we're talking about this. I mean, I've always been fascinated by it before, and perhaps it's a good thing that he's here or that he isn't here. Um, I, I thought that, that, that maybe he, I don't know. What I'm going to say is something about him as a person, which is I've always felt that his sophistication um, is running slightly ahead of his inventive talent. Now, this is a probably devastating thing to say that I'll say, because it's what I really think. And um, certainly I think that in the case of, of um, say, the Bunny Club or some of the other things that he did while he was at the his, his inventive talent, uh, at least when it, had, when it had seized upon the metaphor, was for all the airplane thing. I mean, it was such a fantastic metaphor, the, the use of the, the jungle again at the hotel, that could easily go wrong, yes, but you, you, you maybe couldn't go that far up. But you see, one's then caught in, in a strange sort of situation, which is that, that there's another kind of way of using architectural metaphor, or another kind of way of using architectural sophistication, which is even to take a second rate idea, it's a very dangerous argument, but that one has a grudging admiration for the guy that takes a second rate idea and makes a first rate example out of the second rate idea. There's the other problem of a guy who takes a very sophisticated notion um, and does with it what a sophisticated person will do with a sophisticated notion. And I think there are probably more parallels in other academic areas than perhaps in architecture, because in architecture so few people are really sophisticated or erudite in the way that Paul is. That, that, that the argument sort of breaks down. But I don't know whether anybody would like to take up this point. It's, it's a terrible argument between the, the naive, or almost naive person who is able to do something fantastically good just through sheer craft, let us say, um, the other person who, who is too clever by heart. Now, I'm not quite saying that Paul is too clever by heart, but I think that, that the disappointment <laughs> of these drawings is that they are very much sort of thing that is done by a clever young man in London or New York or possibly in um, Italy, perhaps Florence or somewhere like that, in a certain media, <coughs> knowing all that he does, having all his wits about his fingertips. But I, I get the same, I mean, I don't use the word drive, but I get the feeling that more could be wrought out of the same thing as an invented. Now, of course, he could easily come back and say, but I'm not in the invention game, but... Mm -hmm. I think he would be significant yeah. because he hangs so much of the operation on, on, on rhetoric. Has he time for an end, though? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just put it on the table. He helped me to design a clinic building for Camden, and the buildings are um, a colored building. It's a striped colored building. Passed by town planning was a proviso that it was built in red brick, the same as the adjoining building. You know, it's a devastating improvement. I wept for three days, and Paul, when he heard about it, didn't flinch and said, why, why, why don't you do a thing in red brick? He said, but then you're not into the, the red brick thing, are you? And, Apart from being annoyed about it, I thought for a few days. And what he, would, what he said, well, what you could do is you could just take a fragment of the building and do something marvelous. Let the thing stand. 
the little fragment and someone would come along like an archaeologist and they would see how good it could have been. And I said, but this, this, <laughs> this, you know, this isn't enough, you know, the thing is a failure. But curiously, the comment he made was right, because the thing that we've been, that I've been working on is the idea that one builds in stripes of the real material into the building. It looks fine, actually. It looks really good. You know, but, but it's half of the right building and half the wrong building. And curiously, the rhetoric works. So I, 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 Sorry, James, I, I, I highly, I highly I regard I mean, his job. How is the job? Is the end or beginning? What? How is the job? There's no job. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the, the rhetoric purely is the intent of the building, is the right material. As a decorative element, which was already in the operation. I find it incredibly interesting, you see, because it's something like a double game, which, you know, you come suddenly to the point where the situation begin to play the game to start. No, it isn't, with you. no, curiously, this, this, mm -hmm. this, this isn't a game. To, to just an onlooker, it looks a pleasant enough building. And I, I, I have the highest regard for the intelligence that Paul, mm. in, you know, invests. It, it's a very, it's a very, very cool intelligence that, mm. that, that one remembers in that play by uh, but, you know. So I wonder how much he will be able to do it himself and how much it varies, this kind of intelligence, in collaboration with somebody. Because, you know, I believe that there is something very, very sort of fundamental here and I, I, I feel almost sort of frightened by, you know, the, the uh, fact that uh, there is something like a double game. You know, I can, Call it very simply, you know, it's a conceptual performance in a very bad sense or meaning of the word conceptual. You know, you know what you're doing and you know why you're doing it, the way you're doing it. You just have a sort of reflection on what you're doing. Then you come to all this conclusion very simply, and one doesn't use very sophisticated language, very simply. You know, you take the bits and pieces which are already once reflected upon. And in this case, it's a reflection upon the intuitive, which is a reflection upon a particular thing. And, you know, at least my experience, I'm very, maybe very sort of simple and naive in that sense, but, you know, I never was lucky enough to make this double game there. You know, I can reflect one, but if I reflect twice, I'm always getting it wrong. So I'm rather nicely surprised that, you know, in case you describe it there. But I think basically for most of the people who are not particularly skillful, you know, this is a, a, a recipe for disaster. I think for people who are skillful, it's a terrible waste of time. And then, of course, it could be, see, it could be a waste of time still, but uh, I don't, you know, I sort of... You know, I think it's, I think, I think it's just, it's indulgence. I don't, mm. uh, I'm not interested in, in whether Paul is intelligent or not intelligent. I'm not interested whether we know his name or not. We look at these things and we look at, look at what he's written. And uh, he's very lucky, Jim, to have been working with you. To, to put that particular, you know, that particular response in at that time, which I think was very good. But um, in relation to what's here, I think I think that um, I think he's wasting a lot of his own time, which I think is very sad. Well, I, I don't agree with this. I, I, I remember Arthur Korn after one <coughs> glass of wine saying, "Long live intelligence," and he's dead right, really. He must be greedy with it. He must be self-indulgent with intelligence. No, just to, have, just to have it, 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 it is just great. You know? and, and, to, and to invest it in architecture is... is, is well, to, to invest it to benefit. To invest in architecture to benefit others, yes. Well, to take but to invest in architecture so you and I can, can sort of make our lips and say, by God, just look at the three, three plays of games. <coughs> I'm sure Arthur didn't He didn't mean that, but, 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 I, but to take the second point on, on, about rhetoric, it, it, it's, it's perhaps a sad re reality it, that the British architecture does require situations, or, 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 or does sponsor situations, but where rhetoric it is the only possible vehicle that it is open to, to, to the artist or, or the architect. Take, take a particular instance and they, 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 they're, 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 they're prevalent. That, that many people tell you that, that where they are designing 
that work for local authorities that the council members tell them what is wanted and they, and they have to do it. Now, you can say in a room like this, it's not, it's not an interesting subject for discussion, but, but you have got to find some way of, of explaining to a narcissist or not how he addresses himself to a, a problem in which he is a prisoner. In which he's a prisoner. But that that is that is your skill now and has been for years amongst others. And that there you're talking about uh, transferring, i.e. you being useful, transferring uh, skill in in, if you like, in architectural rhetoric to enable solution of, of what starts off of as a dreary problem. Here we're looking at things that he's had three he could do anything. Free reign, and this is his, his range of choice, and that's where I think it feel that it's uh, well, you can get pure, dry, dried up. I wonder if this is a good point at which to move on to mm -hmm. Will Alsop, and, and maybe this, this sort of general issue of, of rhetoric mm -hmm. and of the actual work that was seen in front of us might. Thank you. 